Okay, our study of the Bible. The study of the Bible. This is the number 27th lesson. And we're on page 57 of 116 pages. So today we're going to look at church fathers. Now I do not mean Catholic fathers. This has nothing to do with the Catholic Church. Now the Founding Fathers of America, we know who they are. This is the Founding Fathers that will lead to our King James Bible. This will be the authority. And what we are going to look at, um, I think we're going to look at, I forget now, five. We're going to look at one, two, three, four. Four, hopefully. We got eight church fathers, not Catholic. And we're going to look at their writings. And what they're going to do is they're going to authorize, they're going to validate the scriptures. And when you look at your modern Bibles, NIV, New King James, Good news. All the realm of Alexandria, Egypt. You're going to find those Bibles are against the founding fathers don't back the Antioch root of our Bible. That Antioch root would be the King James Bible. So the church fathers picked up from the Apostle John to 400 AD and we looked at last time the silent centuries of the New Testament not the silent period between Malachi and Matthew there was a silent period of centuries for the Christian church of Scripture so of the Apostle Paul to the 400 AD these are letters, sermons, the hymnals, the writings, the books, and the commentaries of these men and the men that were under them and the churches that they pastored, the churches that they belonged to, the churches that sought these men for godly counsel. You will find the verses, though verse markings are not yet written, but you will find the verses and chapters, though chapters have not been written yet, you'll find these, not all, you'll find most of them in the church fathers of the New Testament. There are thousands of collected evidences of the New Testament. Oh, the Bible is just written by man. How much evidence do you have for Shakespeare? How much evidence do you have of evolution? None. There are thousands collected of evidence of the New Testament, over 86,000 of the New Testament is quoted. Seminaries, other people say seminaries, I call them seminaries, declared the non proof. There is countless proof. Seminaries and scholarship deny. What we're going to read and study. So where are you going to take? Are you going to take the truth of history? Or are you going to take the proof of scholarship? I mean, everyone today, they want, they want to erase history. They want to get rid of history. 
and the Baptist church and the Christians and the non-Christians in the Baptist church do not know church history. They do not know biblical history. They don't even know what their Bible is and where it came from. So our first person would be Polycarp. He was born approximately 50 AD. And he was martyred. He was put to death. 155 AD. At his martyrdom, he is quoted to say, I heard something. Eighty and six years have I served him, and he has done me no wrong. How then can I blaspheme my king and savior? You threaten me with fire that burns for a season, and after a little while it's quenched. But you are ignorant of the fire of everlasting punishment. That is prepared for the wicked. Polycarp was burned at the stake, pierced with spear, for refusing to burn incense to the Roman emperor. On his farewell, he said, I quote, I bless you, Father, capital F, for judging me worthy of this hour, so that in this company of martyrs, I may share the cup of Christ. Unquote. Eighty-six years for Jesus. That's amazing. I mean, if I were to be, I had to be a hundred and four. I mean. I've only been 34 years in Christ. He's the Bishop of Samaria. You are the Bishop of Samaria. I'm sorry, I keep hearing things. And ordained by the Apostle John. So here's a man that knew the Apostle John. The Apostle John ordained this polycarp. A letter sent to new converts to inspire them tribute the Philippians for their compassion replies their appeal for epistles. He quotes frequently from verses and phrases from 12 different New Testament books. And he cite by name the epistle of Paul to the Philippians. So how do we know Philippians was written by Paul? Polycarp said he was. And Polycarp was, was under the Apostle John. Polycarp wrote in his letters, in his written work and in his oral work, written down. He quotes 12 New Testament books. He encouraged to read and study it. Philippians. I got 110 AD in black and white. 20 years after the Apostle John passes away. Apostle John sent forth this man. This man has given us 12 different books of the New Testament by quote. And then authorizes us to know Paul wrote Philippians. Our number two man, Barnabas. Now, this is not the Barnabas of the New Testament that was sent out with the apostles. This is a different Barnabas. 
He wrote a epistle, a letter. 98 years after John's death, eight years after the death of John, 98 AD, he writes letters to people. And listen to this. This is Barnabas. He quotes Matthew 22, 14. Acts 4.32, John 3.14, John 6.58, John 8.58, John 13.34, 2 Peter 3.8, from the New Testament Gospels and Epistles. So Polycarp and Barnabas gives us written proof <coughs> that you can take to a courtroom. And you say, Your Honor, here is my evidence. And any judge, oh no, <laughs> say hi to trouble. Get out of here. I'm sorry. That's trouble, our new kid. Any judge, it's also thundering. He's brand new, so I apologize. Any rectable judge, uncorrupt, would take the evidence to say, sign, seal, deliver. When you can bring in a courtroom written proof, and we're only going to give you four names of eight, and these are the church fathers, never mind the people that were under the church fathers, that are quoted from, that how come Christians in their Baptist churches 2021 don't know Polycarp, don't know Barabbas, Ignatius, which we're going to do next. But they can name their college football team. They can name the NBA players. They can tell you who's going to box it out on TV. They know their favorite characters on their sitcom. They know who's in the semifinals of a game show. And many of them don't even know the church fathers, and many of them don't even know the name of the apostles. Nor the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. They don't even know the one name of the daughter of Jacob, Thulia, Ignatius, martyred, martyred, I mean, put to death, 95 AD. He was the Bishop of Antioch. You know where Antioch is? That's where we got the King James Bible. He's not the Bishop of Alexandria. He's the Bishop of Antioch. That's our biblical root. That's our biblical tree. That's our biblical foundation, Antioch. They were first called Christians in Antioch. He preached. He taught. And he witnessed the gospel. That Jesus Christ suffered and died. According to the scriptures and was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You got... Men who preach and teach and witness in the Baptist churches, and it's not the gospel. It's their pastor. It's their church. It's their spaghetti dinner. It's their fried chicken. It's the amazement, amusement of the entertainment we're going to have this week. He wrote to the church of Ephesus before his death. You recognize these names from the Bible? Ephesus, Antioch, Samaria, or Smyrna? He quotes from the epistles of Paul to the Ephesians and several other New Testament books. So we've got Polycarp, we got Ignatius telling us and writing to us, or to others, that we found evidence of the Apostle Paul's 
He fizzles. Irenaeus. Free Irenaeus. Church of Sam Samaria. He's a scholar of Polycarp, the first man that we did. Polycarp was this man's teacher. So can you imagine what Polycarp taught this man, Uranus? Must have learned some good things. He wrote very much up to his death in 157 A.D. He's acquainted with the writings of Paul and John. He quotes from Paul's epistles, again, and from John's. He quotes from all three synoptic, or synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And what Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels are, is they write of the same and the Gospel of John has a different tone. The Gospel of John was the, the latest written Gospel. And it actually has the Christian appeal. Matthew's written to Jews. Though many churches are quoting from the, uh, the Gospel of Matthew. And that, you know, that you are the salt of the herb and, and, the, and the Sermon on the Mount. That's not church doctrine. That's Jewish. You're in great error. He's the first Bible instructor to put instructions in writing for later training. So he comes up with the first textbooks. The writings first for future. He would set forth the seminaries that will degrade themselves to become synonyms. He's the first commentator. This is what Paul, John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke said in their letters and writings. And he would quote, There are no oral traditions. Oh, I heard through the grapevine. You know, Paul's mother's neighbor who was a relationship to Timothy's grandmother, aunt, <clears throat> none of that. Invaluable proof. And you'll find this in the modern Bibles. He quotes from the New Testament. Nearly all the New Testament It is so strong and comprehensive, we are assured by this man, Irenaeus, who was the scholar of Polycarp. Polycarp taught this man, and we have written, we have instructions, we have commentaries, we are assured, no oral in his notes, he summary education of each of the different books of the New Testament. So you will not find a hidden book. You won't find a book that's not found in the 66 books of the Bible. And the 39 books of the New Testament we find this man writing instructions for future to learn and to know their Bible. And he would puke if he was saw the Antioch Church Bibles being perverted by Alexandria. In the mess of Westcart and Hort in your NIVs, New American Standard, 
your English, current, and the other trash of the Sinaiticus garbage and the Vaticanus anus. It's the King James Bible. 